has taken over. Let's go. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Steaks, chicks, stacks. You and I are going to make a lot of money. It's Pharrell. Coast to coast. Carver High has been building the uh, college 529 accounts for little Willie and Ray Lewis uh, with all of his proceeds from the prop boat that has been circling the lagoon, making so much cash that we were actually pulled over by the aquatic police this weekend on Friday night. They thought we were drinking and driving. We were actually driving with our feet because we were counting stacks after hitting all those home run props Friday night. The people love us. The popo doesn't love us. Carver High has been stashing money in the attic for the kids' college fund. God bless them. Yes, it's something that had to be done. Uh, yes, it's always the people. That's why, Scotty. It's what it's all about. The people we are here for. Uh, next, uh, the Cardinals beat the Yankees 12-9. to Ugh. Yesterday, they swept the weekend series. The Yankees Ugh. blew the lead in the eighth on Friday night. They lost Ugh. a one nothing game against Jordan Montgomery on Saturday Ugh. night. And then yesterday afternoon, the debut, Scotty, of Frankie Montas, as Ugh. Kay made sure you made he made sure you know how to say his name. They only told you 6,000 times during the broadcast. Frankie Montas uh, did not have a good debut for the Bombers. In fact, Scotty, uh, Nolan Arenado said hi to him very early in the game on Valley Sports Midwest. Arenado with a drive. In the deep left. It's at the wall. Gone! Into the Yankee bullpen. Bush Stadium erupts. Three-run homer. Arenado. The 11th two-out home run by Nolan Arenado. 17th with men on of the 22 that he's hit. And it came on the first pitch for the third time this year. If you don't have goosebumps right now, Ooh. I think you're doing it wrong. Well, I think uh, the one that got me was Jordan Montgomery beating him. He, he threw five great innings, then he had leg cramps because he's not used to the, I mean, sweltering humidity in St. Louis. I've always known what it's like there. I've been there for a million games over the years at both the old and new stadium. Uh, it's stifling the heat in Kansas City and, and St. Louis. There's no air. There's no water. There's no breeze. It's just hot as all Haiti. And I got to tell you, uh, watching that kid, all I thought of was what we said on Friday. This kid has no idea what he's getting into. He's going to love it there because there's no media. They don't give him any heat. And then they win championships. And you go to the ballpark, and every single night it's sold out. They're great baseball fans there. They get more fans there than the Yankees draw. That I mean, that's just all there is to it. The Yankees will draw 45,000 at best. And, I mean, they said the game, I, I think the game on Saturday was the biggest crowd nice. in the history of the stadium. They drew like 48-5. They do that almost every night. There are no seats available for Cardinals games. They, they sell out. Great baseball town, great franchise. He found out in a hurry. He's got that red uniform on. And just like Carpenter will tell him, it'll make you cry playing for that team. All they do is get to the playoffs, and they perform at a high level, unlike the Yankees who haven't done anything since 2009. I told you last week they're not winning the World Series. I'll tell you again. They can't beat the teams in front of them. They can't beat them, Mike, and you know it. Uh, look, uh, you know where I have stood uh, on the Yankees going into this season, uh, and they're starting to so show you some shades uh, of that same team we've se seen the last couple of years. The Cardinals, Scotty, have now won seven games in a row. They've taken over first place in the NL Central. We'll tell you why in a little bit. First, we welcome in all of our radio affiliates, Frail Coast to Coast on a Monday, Sirius XM 159, Sports Map, Sports Byline. Good to have everybody with us. So the Yankees on the flip side, Scotty, they have lost five in a row. They are 9-16 and 16 in their last 25 games. And yesterday, they tried blaming the offense. I mean, they scored nine runs. Aaron Boone says, what do you want us to do? I'll take that every day. Here he is. How glaring is the 12 men left on base? <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Take nine runs all the time. 
we're swinging the bats well. We had one game where we got shut down yesterday. Other, otherwise, we're, we're having the right kind of at-bats. Um, you know, they kept us in the ballpark other than DJ there at the very end, you know, and that's that's a difference. But, um, I mean, we, we, we keep having those this level of at-bats and contributions up and down. You know, we'll be fine. Well, I got to be honest with you, Mike. Uh, there were people talking about him being uh, better than the 98 Yankees and no. uh, all this. They're going to break the all-time record. No, they're not. They, they are not. No. They, they are exactly, right now, playing the kind of baseball where I said it earlier, the Mets are going to pass them. Uh, they're not going to have the best record in baseball when it's all said and done. And, you know, in my view, I think everyone in, in New York is just betting with stupid money uh, that they're going to win it all. Uh, they can't beat the Astros, can't beat the Mariners. I mean, who can they beat? The Twins? I mean, that's about it. And I'll tell you what, their pitching let them down this weekend. That's all there is to it. They mowed through 15 pitchers. Uh, yep. And it was defense and pitching that lost the games. And, and then on Saturday, they couldn't get a hit. They had two hits in the entire game. In the first and in the eighth inning, it was embarrassing. Look, um, they were going to come back to the pack. They weren't going to play 800 baseball the entire season. Now, the unfortunate thing for them right now is uh, they had a nice, you know, six, seven, eight game lead for home field in the American League. That's gone now. They are now a half game up on Houston, uh, and they need. And if they if they had any chance at all of beating Houston, which I'm not sure they can, Scotty, you know, they're going to have to have the key games in Yankee Stadium. They can't be going down there in a minute made for a game seven. I mean, they're a mess right now. The early line. I'm high on Josh McDaniels because if the Raiders have a good year, that means they're battling with the likes of the Chargers. They're battling with the likes of the Kansas City Chiefs. They're getting after it in the mix here, possibly for that division. And that's going to be a strong point because the thing that we see a lot, Kevin, are the younger coaches. Not necessarily in age, but being with those organizations where if they have a good season, they automatically get the flip of the cap here to the top of the heap at the FanDuel Sportsbook to be coach of the year. Only on Sports Grid. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? The morning after. You had to place a bet on the old versus the young who gets Joe <laughs> P's money at the quarterback spot this season. Well, my daddy always said youth and skill is no match for old age and treachery. So I think we still have to look at Tom Brady always. Uh, Tom Brady threw for more than 5,000 yards last year, boys and girls, and I know he's 45 years old. He, he lives off of your disdain for him, your telling him that he can't do something in avocados. The Sports Grid Network. If you want to pick like a pro, you need to be in the know. The future of sports gaming is now, and we take you inside the lines, breaking down all the action and what it means for your bet slip. Turn down the game and tune into Sports Grid Radio. Other networks talk sports talk, but we walk the walk right up to the window. Sports Grid Radio. Listen free on the Sports Grid Radio app, iHeart, or tune in, or catch us on Sirius XM Sports Grid Channel 159. Betting above the rim. Riding Cade Cunningham and Jade Nivey in the backcourt. I love Detroit smashing that 27 and a half. Sneaky value to make the playoffs at plus 1800 as well. <laughs> that's why you're my guy, Shane. I mean, that's why you're my boy. Detroit basketball. Yes, They're back. They got the depth. And don't sleep on the additions of Nerland's Noel and Alec Burks. Betting above the rim.
So Cousin Sal has moved up the food chain to uh, the top of the class in terms of people that we like on Coast to oh, Coast. Wow. He's got heavyweight status on the show, and he's <laughs> back again per usual on Mondays. I have to say, we were just talking about uh, you know how much money I blow going to Steeler games as a season ticket holder, and even going into this season where the whole betting world thinks they're going to go under seven and a half, they're going to stink, they're not making the playoffs. Tom is going to have his first losing season. You had some thoughts on not only my poorest behavior at Steeler games uh, in the in the North Shore area through those three or four days I'm there every week and then every other week, and then your thoughts on the quarterback competition there. Well, first of all, I love it. You're a true fan. You go out there. What, how far is that? What, what kind of flight is that? Two and a half? It's two just hours? an hour flight. Oh, it's an hour, hour from New right. York. You got to do it. So if you have season tickets, you have to do it. I don't know what you do in your business. I mean, uh, you say you go to fancy restaurant. What did they put you at the, the premier booth at Permanente? Are there a lot of fancy restaurants in Pittsburgh? I didn't even know. About well, those. well, of course, there are a lot of fancy ones. The Hyde Park Steakhouse, Eddie V's. Don't get me started. I could rattle off five more. All right. Believe me, I got the receipts to prove it. My wife accused me, listen to this, of yeah. I got a bill at Hyde Park Steakhouse one night so big. She accused me of taking escorts to dinner, but I took my wow. the godfather of my <laughs> uh, children and his son to the steakhouse. But my wife was convinced I was eating steaks and tomahawks with hookers. Now that is awesome. Wow. Your wife, I'm going to make a prediction right now. I don't know that you could bet this on FanDuel or anywhere, but your wife is going to end up with Pete Davidson by uh, February at the latest. <laughs> I could see it. I could see it I now. Think He's a free man. I would leave me for Pete Davidson, actually. <laughs> Even after but Kanye I, made fun of him. Yeah, and he continues to do so. He doesn't care. He's uh, leaning in. I don't know. I was thinking, you know, I talked to Dave Damashek. He's on the Extra Points podcast with me. Uh, big, big Steelers fan like you. I tell, like He's him. like, he wants to turn down. He loves you. He wants to turn down all this preseason nonsense. But I said, if you had to hear one thing that would get you upset, aside from injury, it's that Mason Rudolph was leading the charge. Because you, know you know his ceiling as far as – Pittsburgh quarterbacks go, right? You don't know Kenny Pickett. You don't know. Maybe Trubisky catches lightning in a bottle and becomes a great running quarterback that we thought he'd be. But you don't want to hear that Mason Rudolph is the top guy, do you? No. Listen, I've always said to Carver High, one thing I know about Mason is every time I go to a game and he plays, they lose. <laughs> right. All right. <laughs> So maybe you can get some I mean, of that thirty grand back betting against them uh, when, when you settle in your seat this, at some point. How about this, Sal? Your Mets – kick mm. the Braves teeth in and their lead now is six and a half and Jacob Seven DeGrom, and loss column baby Woo! how about Scherzer and DeGrom the way they pitch this weekend look I love it I love that the most important series in Mets history in August I would have to say they take four to five from the Braves like I said seven in the loss column but it's just there's just a, a different feel to this team I don't know how to explain it but Buck seems to be in charge. I'm not used to having a competent uh, a skipper uh, or a head coach in football or anything like that as I root for the Mike McCarthy's of the world. But Buck is uh, in charge. Like you said, the Grom insurance, it seems like it has to happen. One's in his mid-30s, one's 38. 17 straight, he had, it's 17. I was hoping he'd give up a hit because I knew uh, Pharrell, that they were going to pull him in the seventh inning. I'm like, don't pull him with a no-hitter under his belt. So I didn't like that he gave up a two-run homer, but I was like, okay, give up a hit. I mean, he's been phenomenal. Vogelbach, big fat guy. I mean, you, you listen to – I've watched uh, the post-game shows and pre-game shows. They're like, oh, he's so much fun to watch. Just, just say why is he fun. He's fun because he's fat. He's an obese player who's right. chugging around the bases and scary every time he slides. Like, Dude, we could say that he's fat, right? From one fat guy talking about another. Yeah. Don't be afraid to say it. It's just a fun team. I just think they're going to go deep into October and definitely win the division at this point. I said today to Jason Scott of BetMGM that uh, it's got to be the Mets and Dodgers. They're the two best yeah. teams, the two best pitching, best lineups, best home run hitting, best defense. Uh, I also said today that the Mets are going to have a better record than the Yankees when it's all said and done, and they're going to play them on, I think, around August 22nd, 23rd, uh, the exactly two games right. in the Bronx. Well, they kicked yep. their ass in Queens. Why wouldn't they go in there and kick their ass in the Bronx? The Yankees, I love, but they're overrated. Uh, I think it was a controversial decision when it happened, but they never should have traded Joey Gallo. They've not won a game since they traded <laughs> oh, Joey Gallo. God. They got to get that. Can they get him back? Can the Dodgers cut him eventually? I know there's no new 
trade deadline, but they need that guy back. He was a good luck charm. No, listen, the Yankees have their flaws, and uh, they came out, and, you know, it's like the judges are going to hit a home run. Yeah, judge had a home run in 10 of the first 12 games back from the All-Star break. So that wasn't going to sustain itself. And like you said, Mets and Yankees, same record right now. I'm very excited for that two-game series in the Bronx in August. But, you know, the Padres – Padres are the real loser here, right? Because there's no new trade deadline. They can't go out and get new bats. Can't go out and get new arms. And the Dodgers just own them. They just chew them up and spit them out. And it's kind of lame. But if you look at their lineup, it's like they have two guys hitting over 265. And when you face the Dodger pitching, that's going to show up. I know nobody hits over 240 these days anyway. But when you face the Dodgers, yeah. it's definitely going to make a difference. You hit 210, make, but you make $40 million. Uh, Yeah. A- ask uh, – you know, yourself this question. When you are a Mets fan and you're seeing the Dodgers kicking everyone's ass and you went out there for the home run derby and everything, do you ever just go out to a Dodger game to watch them kick the Padres' ass? Yeah, well, I wasn't there this weekend. But, I'll, yeah, we'll catch we'll catch Dodger games randomly. I mean, I guess there might. Now that Chase, that, that, that disgusting creature, Chase Utley, is far removed from the equation. I'll root for the Dodgers when I'm out here. That gives the kids something to, yeah, you like to hear the crowd going. That's why you fly every weekend to go to Pittsburgh. You want the crowd rooting for the team you're rooting for, right? I don't get that a lot when I'm catching the Mets here at Dodger Stadium or uh, or otherwise. But, yeah, the Do fun you? team, I, that's the final four, I would think, at this point, Dodgers, Mets, Astros, Yankees. Do you fly to Dallas to see uh, the Cowboys play at Jerry's World? Because I've been down there. It's incredible. You love it, right? Yeah, I catch at least one game a year. Uh, I'm, I'm torn between a couple. This, uh, but I mean, they're always prime time, which is tough if you have to get that Monday flight, right? And it's a Sunday night game, and and yeah. everything else is going on. But uh, yeah, yeah, I love it over there. Um, still a great spectacle that Jerry built, and uh, let's put a freaking winner on the team, right? Boy, everyone's everyone's penciling in those Eagles. You can't like the yeah, Eagles too me. much as a Steelers fan, right? Like, you still don't I mean, have the right guy k- taking snaps, do you? I'm on Dallas. Uh, they're still – they got Dak Prescott. He's better than Hurts. They're still loaded. They got Parsons. They I think they got tons of talent. Everybody acts like they lost Cooper and that they're yeah. going under. They're going to win that. And, and then how about this one I hear? Uh, no one's ever repeated in the NFC East in 30 years. I don't care what yeah. anybody says. They're still the best team in that division. Hands down. Good. I like hearing it. I like hearing it. Uh, yeah, I think Washington goes away. I think the Giants are a few years away. Everyone likes what they did with the draft. But, yeah, these teams like the Eagles and the Chargers, who on paper did everything right in the offseason, it don't doesn't always add up, right? So I'm counting on uh, the Eagles to misfire here. So you said earlier that uh, with college football and pro football starting – that it's almost offensive to you that what's your dog's name right there by the way uh that's super dave named after uh, the late great super dave osborne yeah yeah he was great uh, dave osborne was incredible uh, what a very clutch it. performer uh, had gigantic onions uh guy wasn't afraid of anything <laughs> he was like evil knievel um so uh what i was saying earlier do you believe that uh, you said that essentially that basketball doesn't even exist anymore. People should stop talking about it because football is coming. Well, I saw you list. It sounded like you were listening to Jalen and Jacoby, and I like I like those guys very much. But they're commenting on Durant. Was Durant says trade me or uh, yeah. or fire uh, Steve Nash? It's like hey, yeah. I'm trying I'm like yeah. hey Pharrell, don't worry about it. Pay attention here. Let's talk baseball. Let's talk anything else but right. basketball. Sorry, Kevin Durant, you're one of five superstars that you can't trust anymore. So I don't want to hear about basketball. <laughs> All right, Sal, have a great week. Always love having you on. Uh, win some money. We'll see you next week on Coast to Coast, brother. Have a good one. All right, pal. You too. Take care. My man. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Rogers and the morning the after. Wilson. 
we saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. fantasy Magic. sports the today Cavaliers are a little thin as well newswire minus 160 favorite on the money line today for arizona pharrell coast ABG, to coast that's where they win cups they win stanley cups over there give me the game penguins. time decision kind of bizarre when you consider it like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, yeah, live, all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take a four and a half. In game, oh, live, oh, prime yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Betting above the rim. How can they run this back? Is beyond me. What I think this is is, hey, Kyrie's comfortable coming back. We may not want to trade Kevin Durant. To me, that sounds like y'all need to pony up a little bit more. I think Kevin Durant's more likely to stay, but I still look at that January 15 day, if things are still rocky in Brooklyn, that that's when Kevin Durant may look to be moved. Betting above the rim. The morning after. What do you expect the offense to look like, Carrington? without having Tyreek Hill this year, and what impact will that have on Patrick Mahomes? You can't do what New England did, <clears throat> excuse me, in the in the early mid-2000s, where you're just putting Brady and a cast of characters together. It is a playmaker league. I think you need dynamic weapons on the outside. I don't think the Chiefs have enough to win the Super Bowl this year, but I do think they're good enough to win their division, possibly win a playoff game. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Haro inside the $1.3 trillion business of sports with your daily numbers game. Well, it's come. TVG, a staple for betting on racing on television before 2017 and mobile betting, will now be renamed FanDuel Network. And the programming will focus on mainstream sports with a betting eye, looking at the positive nature of all aspects of this. There will be places for horse racing, clearly, but the channel dominated by other sports as well, though racing continues to change the meter upward as they move forward. The programming still requires significant content additions in order to make sense for 24 hours. And get this, the press release talks about the filling of the time with wagering opportunities such as pickleball, Korean football, Chinese basketball. Well. It may not be the most exciting stuff, but you can bet. Well, I saw, uh, you know, it wasn't just the Yankees having problems. Uh, we talked about the Padres having those same problems. And we've talked even with Sal about what the Mets did to the Braves. But how did they do it, Carver High? How did they accomplish what they did against Atlanta? Atlanta's so far back now, six and a half. I think they're uh, living in real deep water. Uh, a monster weekend for the Mets out in Queens, Scotty. They take four out of five from the Atlanta Braves. Edwin Diaz set the tone on Thursday night, of course, with the six-out save, Scotty, and then he shut the door yesterday for Jacob deGrom on SNY to finish off the weekend. Here we go. The Mets celebrate the return to City Field of Jacob DeGrom, who throws five and two-thirds perfect innings. And the Mets take four of five from the Braves to stretch their lead to six and a half games in the National League East as they beat Atlanta five to two. I got to tell you, I know that DeGrom and Scherzer get all the juice, but this guy Diaz, from literally the outhouse to the penthouse, from where he was, the most reviled guy in New York of any sport. I mean, this guy, they abused him, the tabloids, like no other. And then now this guy is throwing absolute gasoline, and no one can hit him. I mean, he went in and struck out the side. And then how about this kid after the game? Is this kid for real? No wonder he's a rookie. Strider talking about none of it matters. What do you got, Carver High? 
Uh, yeah, Spencer Strider, who started for the Braves on Sunday, says, ah, Mets, a little lucky uh, here in August. We'll see what happens in October. <laughs> Here's Strider. Um, you know, a lot of weird hits. Um, Is that Billy really, the Kid? Uh, seem to be having a lot of luck right now offensively, so um, that's great. It's August. Lucky. Um, see, what, see what things are like in October. Yeah, Lucky. thanks, dude. You've never you've never been involved in October. You're in your diapers. Thanks so much for your input. Uh, look who we got now. This is unbelievable. Speaking of uh, badasses, not yet. Are we are we ready? No. Oh Christ Almighty! Just keep going, Carver. High. I, I, you're gonna make me wait for the legend. I gotta wait. Is what you're doing to me? Oh, boy. Uh, so Strider, uh, Scotty, I, there's not too much luck when you're 70 and 39, uh, which is what the Mets are now after beating the Braves four out of five over the weekend. Not much luck there. Jacob deGrom sets major league record most Ks in his first 200 starts. Of course, uh, Scherzer pitched in the nightcap on Saturday of that doubleheader sweep. He went seven, no runs, four hits, and 11 strikeouts. And did you see the brawl? Uh, the Met fan brutally knock it out. That Brave fan always got oh, yeah. a big fight with a rivalry for a uh, five game set down there in Queen Scotty. He got a good hold of him in that one. <laughs> it's no longer safe going to a ballpark in the Bronx, Queens, or in Philadelphia. Uh, enter at your own risk. Do not bring your wife or your child to the game ever. No. And be very careful in your clothing selections. Uh, you need to be very careful. The Blue Jays, Scotty, had a good weekend in Minnesota. They beat the Twins 3-2 yesterday in 10. little controversy for that run in the 10th inning. Let's hear it on Sportsnet in Toronto. Biggio in the air to left. Beckham setting up, not deep. Here's the catch. Here comes Merrifield out at the plate. Will the Blue Jays challenge? Merrifield is arguing. John Schneider's got his hand up, and the Blue Jays want to have a look. There was a violation by the catcher. The runner is safe. And Rocco Baldelli is livid and is going to be out of this game. Well, I mean, Rocco got his money's worth, Carver High. They tossed him, but he was absolutely lit, and he was furious. Uh, he got his money's worth on the field and after the game. And honestly, Scotty, he had every single right uh, to do that. Uh, Rocco afterwards was very unhappy uh, with the play at the plate on the winning run. We will put, and here is Rocco for you, Scotty. Let's go. That play has not been called since the beginning of replay more than a couple of times. In all of baseball, the thousands and thousands of games and plays at home where the catcher actually does block the plate over and over and over again, that play has n virtually never been called. And for someone to step in in that situation and ultimately make a decision that that was blocking the plate, that's beyond embarrassing for our game it's completely unacceptable. I can't even believe I'm sitting here talking to you guys about this right now. It's one of the worst moments I think we've seen of umpiring in any game I've ever been a part of in baseball. And I think it was pathetic. I just am excited that Rocco is the manager of the Twins because I forgot that he was even alive. I was like, wait, is that really, is, is that guy in baseball? He's the manager of the No wonder they never beat the Yankees. Uh, anyway, and it's not him I blame. I just didn't even know. I'm like, Rocco Baldelli's the manager? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm not really excited about things going on in the land of lakes. Look who it is. Jody Mack. Jesus, what a badass. This guy's so popular. He owns Philadelphia. He hasn't paid for a meal since he was in high school. <laughs> he owns New York. He owns the fan. He owns CBS Sports Radio. And now he graces C to C on a Monday from Philly. My man, Jody McDonald. What up, Jody? Matt, kid. Can I own Rocco Baldelli as well? Because, yeah, I kind of knew he was the Twins manager. Hasn't been making much news, but... I hate to say it, Rocco, you're wrong. 
they called the play correctly. The rule stinks. I don't know. Can we say sucks on uh, sports? Yes. The rule yes. sucks. Uh, oh, I forgot. I was talking to Pharrell. I can say pretty much anything I want. Um, <laughs> the rule sucks, but they ruled it correctly. You can't block the plate. You're catching block the plate. You can't do that. They were right to overturn the call. Sorry, Rocco. You can go back to bed, and Pharrell can forget about you again. All right, so tell me about the Phillies these days. They've done it with Schwarbaum. They've done it with pitching, and then they get Thor, who's going to get a lot of ground ball outs, keep that ball in the dirt. Uh, I'm not worried about Gibson, Suarez. I like what they're doing, and they're getting Bryce back one of these days here, early September. How dangerous can they be, or are you not buying them? No, I buy them as a legit playoff team. The, the Mets have opened up pretty damn big lead, so I don't know if they can win the division. They make the playoffs. It's going to be as a wild card, but they're a legit wild card squad. Uh, Dave Dombrowski did a nice job, added some nice pieces. You mentioned Thor. How about that game the other night? He gets a complete game victory. He gives up four runs in five innings and 11 hits in five innings. Wasn't all that good, but he got a win, and that's all that matters, right? You add that to Nola and Wheeler. They got two legit number one and 1A type starters. And the way the offense has clicked in of late, Scotty, uh, I know you and I have talked about this before. Guys playing to the back of their baseball cards. Well, JT Realmuto and Nick Castellanos weren't even close. They basically stunk for the first half of the season. Both right. have gotten hot. Realmuto about uh, three or four weeks now. Castellanos the last two weeks. Now they're playing like the former All-Stars they were. And this Philly lineup, even without Bryce the Harper in it, is putting up runs galore. Yeah, I've come down uh, and seen a couple games. Uh, I like going there. I've seen, you know, I've told you before, I've gone to Eagle games. I go to Phillies games. I like seeing uh, how things are going down there. Those fans are crazy. Uh, I like watching Bryce Harper play baseball. Imagine how good they'd be if he had been in the lineup this whole time because he's 35-100 automatic. He was uh, MVP of the National League last year and was putting up MVP type numbers again uh, before he went out. What what people forget, though, and you got to remember this when he comes back, he was DHing for the Phillies. He only played in the field for the first week of the season. Then he was DHing for like two months because he's got an elbow issue. He didn't have any surgery done, so when he comes back, he's not going to go back out into the field. He's going to be their designated hitter, but he was crushing it as their DH, and I expect him to do so when he gets back. He was on the broadcast the other night. He said September-ish. I don't know what the hell that means. Uh, I used to say it to my mom when I was going out as a 12-year-old. Yeah, I'll be home 11 o'clock-ish, Ma. And I roll in at 11.55 and get, make sure you're in before midnight. Uh, but I, I'm hoping that means late August for Harper to be back. If it goes into September, you got to be as patient as it is for him to get 100% healthy. Uh, but he is going to come back at some time, and that'll be a huge in-season addition for the Phillies. Did you almost keel over when you saw Castellanos hit the winning home run the other night? He had a big home run. And, no, here's where I almost keeled over. In that Syndergaard game I was talking about, last out of the game, and nobody knew it because the rain was falling, but it hadn't come down in buckets like it did after Castellanos made the play. He made a play in right field coming in on a ball, timed it perfectly, caught it with his momentum going to home plate, and then threw a strike and doubled up a runner trying to tag from third. When I say he's a butcher in right field, that would be kind. He's just not a good outfielder. But he made a great play on that one, and yeah, it ended up being the last play of the game. So what's the deal? Uh, can you chill out for a few minutes and keep going? Because, like, it's just so awful. If I only get to ask you a couple of questions about the Phillies, I want to talk about the Eagles. I want to talk about the Mets and Yankees with you. I want to talk about the Giants and Jets. Because you, you know, run both towns. i got to see which one you're more of a homer for. I know it's Philly, but I see if you can lie to my audience. Can you hang out for a few minutes? Well, I'm, for, I'm here for you, buddy. Whatever you need. Trevor Lawrence, coast coast. Uh, let's face it, he was awful in his rookie year. Awful. But, you know, they blamed it all on Urban Meyer. And I got to tell you, uh, I don't. I blame it on him.
Like, he's the one playing in the game. Yeah. Now, you can say the coach is terrible all you want. Good for you. I mean, the guy was a mess. And I'm sure he'll be better. They've already crowned him the best second-year guy. The Sports Grid Network. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion. 2017, world number one. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? Betting above the rim. As much as we think it's got to be about LeBron, it's got to be even more about AD. He's got to carry the load. He's got to have that season where he takes himself inside as a small ball five and attack people, and he's got to shoot it better than I think 17%. He will look for a huge bounce back year out of Anthony Davis with a chance to win the MVP. Betting above the rim. The early line. But can we all please just admit they should have kept him in in Minnesota? Like, is everybody okay now to admit that it was a ridiculous thing that he was taken out in that baseball game? To put a perfect game under the belt would have been magical. And again, Donnie, this is not the first time he has been injured this season. Can everybody just admit they should have let Kershaw go for the perfect game? Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Yo, we know how competitive the AFC is going to be. The NFC feels like there might be some other areas for value. Where do you see that on the board entering 2022? I do believe that the Vikings have a lot of offensive pieces here that can be really scary. And that division's very weak. Uh, even the Packers are a little weaker year over year. The defense is very good, but when you take Devontae Adams out of a team, it's still something to consider. The Sports Grid Network. I go way back uh, with Jody uh, over the last uh, 30 years in my life. I've been around uh, Jody in radio and uh, TV uh, in the Philadelphia and and New York markets. Uh, I I worked in Philly uh, and I was always on in Philly on YSP. And I think it was on the uh, second uh, whip channel, the AM channel or something like that. Yeah. Over oh, yeah. years when we were, was, see, I can't keep track of it. I just, cause I don't care. Uh, but I love it there. Uh, being a Pittsburgh boy, I still go to Philly a lot. I live there. I got a lot of a loser friends that live there that I love. Uh, a lot of drunks and, and troublemakers <laughs> and season ticket holders. I go there. No surprise I go there, there. Often. And then I'm always in Atlantic city a lot. So I worked with Jody, uh, at the fan, uh, forever in New York. Uh, you know, I love you. We've been friends forever. I think the world of you. I think you're one of the greatest guys I've ever worked with in uh, radio, without a doubt. I have to ask you, seriously, what's it been like? I've never really had you on the show as a guest. I wanted to ask you what it's been like for you to be able to, frankly, manipulate both markets and get away with it. Most people in Philly want all of us in New York to die and it, yes. it's the same feeling going back down south on the 95. But you have been able to circumvent that and be loved by fans in both, which really is unheard of. Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Um, 
because you know I'm a straight shooter, Pharrell. I always have been uh, from the time I started in this industry 35 years ago. Uh, I wasn't a BS or I wasn't a guy who was going to come in with uh, what is now considered hot takes. No, I'm just going to straight shoot with you. And I do that in New York. I do that in Philadelphia. I do that wherever I work. And there are some people that don't like me in Philly. There are some people that don't like me in New York. You're right. There's a whole bunch of people. No, you must be a loyal fan and you can only root for the hometown team. No, that's not me. I never have. And somehow I've kept enough people interested and entertained that they've said, yeah, you can continue doing shows for us. But you have done so well at the biggest radio stations in the world. I mean, WIP and WFAN, I don't care what anybody says. Uh, You know, I know all the stations. I've been on all of them. I've been on every great station in America five times over. But those are two heavyweights. Which one has meant more to you? Is it the Philly roots or do you get your rocks off being on uh, the fan and on the national network in the Big Apple, honestly? Oh, I'll give you the best head you've ever heard in your life. Um, FAN is where I started and shoot, uh, I started with sports talk radio with WFAN. There was never a 24 hour a day, seven day a week, all sports radio station until WFAN in 1987. So I started there, uh, when they started there. So, and that's where I grew up. That's where I was born. That's where, uh, I lived for the first 30 years of my life. So that'll always be home. But I've now done way more shows in Philadelphia. I've been in Philadelphia as a full-time player, part-time player, whatever time player, longer than I've been in New York. So, yeah, I claim two homes. New York is my original home and will always be a home to me. But I've been living in South Jersey slash Philly for 30 years now with a wife, with a daughter. So, yeah, I'm a cheater. I found a way to walk that fine line down the middle and be a two-town guy. I'm a, I'm a girl dad too, Jody Mack. You and I got a lot in common. Uh, so I, I, I wanted to, Carver High's in my ear right now. I got to ask this one question. Does he think he's cooler than the soul man? I don't know. Let's ask him. Do you think you're cooler than coal man and the soul man? Is Jody Mack cooler than the soul man is what Carver High wants to know. I think he is cooler. My man, my man, Jody Mack, he can hang with the soul man any day of the week. I, I assume he's referring to Dave Sims, who used to be yes. Ed Coleman's partner on WFAN, now uh, play-by-play guy for the Seattle Mariners out in Seattle these days. Right. Now, there's a Philly guy. He walked the fine line. Sims was a Philly guy who came to New York, made it in New York at FAN. Now he's out in the you – know, I, I at least stay in the Northeast. Sims goes all the way to the Northwest. So maybe he's geographically cooler than me, but that's about it. Other than that, yeah, I'm cooler than him. So uh, how do you think the Yankees are going to do in Seattle? Because they haven't been doing very well uh, coming out of St. Louis, losing all three, uh, nine and 16 and 25. What do you think the problem is with the Bombers these days as they face Gilbert Grape tonight against Jamison Shots of Tyone in Seattle? On the the shows that I've done on FAN, uh, starting before the season, off season, a lot of people calling for Brian Cashman's head. And then the Yankees get out to this great start with guys that he went out and acquired uh, their new third baseman, their new catcher, their new shortstop. Uh, Brian Cashman is the genius of New York. I don't understand why he traded Jordan Montgomery at the trade deadline. And Montgomery sticks it to him with a five shutout inning performance the other day. I think Brian might have gone a little bit overboard. And all of a sudden, the Yankees don't look like the dominant team in the American League. The Astros have caught them. They had actually, uh, even with them at this stage, uh, hey, they set themselves up for this. It's World Series of bust. It's World Series of bust for the Yankees every year, but even more so this year when they ran away and got the biggest lead in all of baseball as far as divisionals go. Um, I don't know if their pitching is going to be good enough to get them a World Series this year. I surely believed it in May, June, July. August, now their pitching is starting to look a little shaky, and there's nothing Brian Cashman could do. He's just going to have to double down on all the guys he's got. Nestor Cortez better be the all-star that he was. Time to turn back that clock to July because the Yankees have their work cut out for him. Yeah, and he hasn't pitched like that. You're right. And what about the Mets with the Scherzer DeGrom uh, performances over the weekend and Scherzer prior to that? You've already seen what they've done with – uh, the Bassett Hound and and uh, Tijuana Walker 
uh, your boy. And I mean, they have uh, with Diaz. Can you believe that guy, how bad he stunk in New York and how good he is now? Have you ever seen a guy take that kind of abuse and then turn it around and get the last laugh? He is ultra dominant now. He's a precautionary tale for all those sports fans out there. As soon as you start to go bad, everybody wants to run you out of town like that. Get him. He stinks. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. Diaz was the best reliever in the American League. The Mets traded for him. He came over. He was mediocre at best for the Mets for an entire year, but they were invested in him. They had a contract. They said, we're going to ride this out. Well, they wrote it into this year. Now he's the best reliever in baseball. So be very careful when you want to write guys off who have already achieved a level of greatness. And certainly Diaz did when he led the American League and saved. He's back to being that dominant reliever that he was when he was with the Mariners. So how's the football shaping up in Philadelphia with Hurts and the Eagles? A lot of people think they're going to win the East. I went to some of their games. I went to that Kansas City mauling last year when Mahomes threw five TDs against him at the link. And believe me, I just kept my mouth shut. I know how to keep my mouth shut in Philly so I don't leave with a fat lip at the game. Uh, I just sat there and watched that 42-30 game. And I just kind of mingled between all them drunk Eagle fans in the parking lot getting to the car so I wouldn't be killed. But a lot of people think they're going to take the East. I still like the Cowboys, Jody. Yeah, I'm one of those who think they are going to take the East. Um, mostly because, and you hearken back to that Kansas City game last year, defense was terrible. Mahomes was great, but the defense was terrible. The Eagles' defense is going to be much improved. Uh, they picked up a linebacker, Kazir White, from San Diego. Uh, they drafted uh, Nicobe Dean in the third round. T.J. Edwards started the year on the bench, became their middle linebacker starter, played great the second half of the year. He's been the best linebacker in camp. They had Jordan Davis to that defensive line. They go out and finally get a pass rusher and Hassan Reddick, who will get double-digit sacks. The Eagles haven't gotten double-digit sacks out of an edge rusher in about a decade. It's going to happen this year with Hassan Reddick, even though everybody wants to talk about the quarterback and Jalen Hurts and adding A.J. Brown. No, the Eagles are going to win the East this year because of their defense more so than their offense. You like that, Coach? I do. Um, he had one of the worst introductory press conferences I've ever seen. He right. stumbled. He fumbled. He didn't sound like he knew what he was talking about. He didn't have the answer to questions. He should have had the questions. Yeah, there's your Philadelphia fan. Out! Get him out! They'll fire him now! He hadn't even coached the game. They wanted to run his ass out of town. Um, but, hey, he steps in, takes over a 4-12 and team, Gets them to the playoffs. They won nine games, could have won 10. They played their JV against Dallas last game of the season. Um, yeah, they got their ass kicked by uh, the Bucks in Tampa, down in Tampa in their first playoff game. But they made a pretty big jump from Dougie Pease last year on the sideline. I think he's a good coach. I think he's a smart coach. I think the players relate to him. Uh, I think the Eagles actually kind of lucked into having a pretty damn good hire. How do you think uh, Dable will do with Danny Dimes? And do you think Zach will be any better than he was last year? Uh, you know, is he going to show some s signs of improvement? Are the Jets uh, going to stink again? I like the new general manager of the Giants. I like the new head coach of the Giants. I like the two high draft picks the Giants got in this past year's draft. Danny Dimes is still a quarterback, so the Giants aren't going to win spit this year. Um, but they are headed in the right direction because they changed the organization from top to bottom. They needed to, and they added some good young pieces. They're going to be better down the road. They're not going to show up in 2022, but if you're a Giant fan, if you got a little patience, know your team's headed in the right direction. Now, for my J-E-T-S. Go ahead. I was going to say for my Jets, because uh, you know, or should remember, I'm a diehard. I yeah. was uh, sitting on the couch with my father yeah. at age seven when they won the Super Bowl in 1969, waiting to get back on the couch with my father again for a Jet Super Bowl appearance would be nice. Yeah, that's not happening this year either. The Jets will, mark my words, the Jets will be very improved this year and still finish in fourth place in the AFC East because that's a <laughs> tough decision. Car stinking Carver's bills are too good. Uh, Belichick's still Belichick, and I'm a Tua guy, so I think he's going to have a breakout year. So the Jets are going to be improved from 4-15 and 15 or whatever the hell they were, 4-13 and 13 to about 6. They may even get 7 this year, but they're still going to finish in last in the AFC East.
I'm with you on Tua, and uh, Jody, it's great seeing you. Thanks so much for spending so much time with us. Say hi to everybody at uh, CBS Sports Radio and the fan. I don't really want to say to uh, anybody hi in Philly, if that made any sense at all. But yeah, I love no, you. Guys, it's but great to see you. My pleasure. Just try and remember you had me on. You said this before. You had me on before. I was already on the Pharrell video once before. Don't forget me next time, all right? I can't remember all this stuff, Jody. I What am I? I can't remember yesterday. I got early for Alzheimer's. We'll get you back on during the Eagle season, Jody. You're the best, brother. All the best, man. How about that guy, Carver High? Your boy, Jody Mack, giving us the business on the Eagles and on the Jets and the Giants and the Mets and the Phillies. I mean, this guy's got to cover more teams than Jesus. Oh, my God. Uh, that guy, he's got to do the... his homework. I don't have to uh, remember that much stuff. I didn't remember he was on the show. When was he on the show, Carver High? Like, during a COVID couple, year? Couple, couple months ago. Couple months oh, ago. Oh, my ass, I a couple believe. months ago. And I was <laughs> couple hosting. Couple months ago. You were hosting. Might have been at the end of the Eagles season. Might have been at the end of the Eagles season or around when they played the Bucks in the playoffs. But he was. Right. One of the all-time greats is Jody McDonald. And he's right about one thing, Scotty. Jets are going to come in last place this year. He is right about that. That's for sure. You, you guys <laughs> trying to make me look bad. You and you and McDonald giving me the business. All right, fair enough. Uh, screw the Eagles. Screw the Phillies. Screw the Bills. Screw the Jets. Screw the Giants. Go Steelers. There's only one great city in Pennsylvania, and it's on the other side in Pittsburgh, PA, and Jody knows it. Screw Jody, too, if he doesn't believe them apples. Trevor Lawrence, coast to coast. Uh, let's face it, he was awful in his rookie year. Awful. But, you know, they blamed it all on Urban Meyer. And I got to tell you, uh, I don't. I blame it on him. Like, he's the one playing in the game. Now, you can say the coach is terrible all you want. Good for you. I mean, the guy was a mess. And I'm sure he'll be better. They've already crowned him the best second-year guy. The Sports Grid Network. Maurice Allen, 2015-2016 European Long Drive Tour Champion, 2017 World Number One. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? Betting above the rim. As much as we think it's got to be about LeBron, it's got to be even more about AD. He's got to carry the load. He's got to have that season where he takes himself inside as a small ball five and attack people, and he's got to shoot it better than I think 17%. He will look for a huge bounce back year out of Anthony Davis what a chance to win the MVP. Betting above the rim. The early line. But can we all please just admit they should have kept him in in Minnesota? Like, is everybody okay now to admit that it was a ridiculous thing that he was taken out in that baseball game? To put a perfect game under the belt would have been magical. And again, Donnie, this is not the first time he has been injured this season. Can everybody just admit they should have let Kershaw go? For the perfect game. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Yo, we know how competitive the AFC is going to be. The NFC feels like there might be some other areas for value. Where do you see that on the board entering 2022? I do believe that the Vikings have a lot of offensive pieces here that can be really scary. And that division's very weak. Uh, even the Packers are a little weaker year over year. The defense is very good, but when you take Devontae Adams out of a team, it's still something to consider. <laughs>
I know I didn't remember my anniversary either, Mafia. Is there anything else I forget? On my daughter's birthday? Oh, Christ. I can't keep up with all this stuff. I know one thing. It's time for today in Carver High history. It is. 1957, Walter O'Malley officially announces the Dodgers will play in Los Angeles. 65, Warren Spahn gets his 361st victory. First as a giant. How about that? 1974, Royals-Twins game is briefly interrupted by President Nixon's resignation speech. They didn't put the game back on because nobody wanted to watch the Royals and the Twins. 1976, the White Sox play the first game of a doubleheader against the Royals by wearing navy blue Bermuda shorts. I know, Scotty, you love those shorts that the White Sox were rolling with back in 1976. I've been to those games. I was there for that. <laughs> 1982, Ray Floyd wins his second PGA Championship by three strokes. 84, Carl Lewis, third gold medal at the LA Olympics. America sweep the 200 meter. 1990, Carlton Fisk ties Johnny Bench, hit his 327th homer. 92, the original Dream Team wins gold in Barcelona. They beat up Croatia. 97, Randy Johnson, first pitcher to strike out 19 batters in a game. Twice in the same season, 2002, John Smoltz, 40 saves, reaches it faster than any other pitcher in history. 2004, Elway into the Hall of Fame. We like to call it the Hall of Very Good now. The Olympics opened in Beijing in 2008. Justin and B.J. Upton in 2014, both homer in a game for the fifth time. New Major League record for brothers. And 2016, Scotty, Brandon Crawford of the Giants, first player in 41 years to get seven hits in a game. And a rocket into center field, a base hit, and here comes Belt. Here comes Ozuna's throw. It is online, and Belt scores! And Crawford going down to second, and Crawford is out at second base. His seventh hit of the night, knocks in the lead run. That was incredible, and now his knees are shot. <laughs> Got to get you a pair of those shorts, Scotty. Those shorts from 76 with the Dude, White Sox. Those are I've tremendous. seen Wilbur Wood pitch for the White Sox. I've seen the <laughs> softball uniforms. <laughs>